Welcome to the Lazy Geeks Network. Lazy Geeks Podcast, our weekly news podcast that discuss news from the geek world that interests us from the past week. So this is for the week of August 27th, 2017. I'm Stephen Vargas. I'm Adam Riley. And uh, Roadhouse. That's all I got to say. You're too <laughs> stupid to have a good time. That's the best line for the fucking movie, dude. <laughs> the, 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 when the, he the said most, that, most, I was a little kid when he said that. And I went, God damn! <laughs> <laughs> the most questionable line I had was, "I used to fuck guys like you in prison." Yeah. I'm like, you go, you go, you kind of go, oh, oh, like <laughs> what the fuck? Because <laughs> like when I, because like you know, like a lot of people liked it for a long time, and I remember watching it years ago, and I, I was, I think I just didn't quite get it. I was like, this is dumb. And then as you know, with the last couple of years, I kind of revisited it, and then afterwards, I was like, you know, this is actually a fun movie to watch. Like, you know, you take it for what it is, and it's just, it was hilarious. And I remember rewatching it when we did it for uh, the other podcast that I did with Patrick. And I remember hearing that line, and I'm like, wait, what? Is, I'm not sure if that's supposed to intimidate Patrick Swayze or turn him on. I'm not exactly sure what the guy was going for. You, you almost for. expect Patrick Swayze to kind of just pause for a second, be like, <laughs> did you? Do you know what you're saying? Like, <laughs> <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> kind of like where he does, like, you know, he does that stance when he's, like, ready to fight. And then he kind of just, like, kind of like, wait, what? <laughs> right. <laughs> and uh, we, um, so I saw it at the Vista down in uh, down in um, Hollywood. And, uh, oh, man, when you come back, when you come back down here, w- even if we just go check out a movie over there, it's a cool theater. It's like a one movie house theater. And um, and I've seen a couple of midnight movies that they've done over there, and uh, so Patrick and Amador and I went out there. So and they had um, three guys from the uh, from the movie there. Uh, one of the guys was actually the one of the uh, the bass player in the band from the John Healy band. Right. Um, so he was there. <laughs> the guy that got pinned under the polar bear has the like best line in the movie. I got I was trapped under a polar bear. <laughs> <laughs> and um, and then one of the bouncers. So they had a little Q and A, and then then we saw the movie afterwards. And it was hilarious too because like there were so many moments where I'm just like, how did I not see that before? Because because in essence, I already seen it. I saw it twice just before leaning up. But that was before the for the for the podcast. And there were moments in there like um, what the the sex scene between Patrick Swayze and that blonde, like. It, like when you're watching on the big screen, you're kind of like, ah, that's the most awkward sex scene like ever. Like the the voices that the sounds that she's making, she does <laughs> yeah. a she turns to the side and makes a duck face, and like Ooh. everybody started rolling. And then like he pulls up her skirt, and I'm like, she ain't wearing any underwear. I'm like, oh, so she knew. Like she already knew she, what time it was. She, she knew dude. what was she knew what was gonna happen. She knew what she was about to receive. <laughs> <laughs> And then the one part where Patrick Swayze is doing the, um, that uh, Tai Chi in the middle of that field. Right? Just randomly. Just randomly. And then the old dude that owns the house comes out there and like watch, is, sees him doing that and just kind of stares. And then Ben Gazzara's character's on his mansion and he's just staring. And I'm like, and, and we, everybody starts laughing because it, it was, it's that look that was held just a little bit too long. <laughs> <laughs> This magic moment, <laughs> and, you know, because I'm like, and then I kind of said, like, I- I'm starting to question a few things, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but it was like, what the fuck? And then you know, when he kills spoilers, if you haven't seen this movie, what are you doing? Uh, but he, when he drags the that uh, guy's body into the into the river, and he's shouting out uh, Ben Gazzara's name, and he leaves the body floating. At the end of the movie, when you know, when him and uh, when Patrick Swayze and the chick are in there, you know, 
you know, diving around and making out and stuff like that. We were cracking it because, like, it'd be funny if, like, in the background, you see the body still floating in the water. <laughs> like, <laughs> just kind of keeps bumping into them on there doing that. I'm like, that's like a gag reel somewhere. <laughs> they had to have done that. But, oh, man, it was so much fun watching that because, like, you know, you, you took it for what it was and it was, like, it was hilarious. And they, they said one of the movies they're looking to do for October is... Uh, well, they're gonna, they want to do Texas Chainsaw, but I, I, I was like, eh, I'm not sure if I'm into that one. Yeah. Uh, but that movie, you know what? I've watched the original again. I've watched it a couple times. The movie sucks. <laughs> yeah. Like, I don't understand why it's so. You know, there's always those few movies where they're like these huge cult classics, right? And you watch them, and you're just like, okay. But I've never, I've never been into like the like the horror genre. Like horror, I've never yeah. been, I've never been like that. Picked up the Fangor magazine or whatever, you know. Um, but uh, they were gonna do that. They were gonna do. Um, they're thinking of doing uh, Young Frankenstein. Um, I'd watch Young Frankenstein. Oh, yeah, thought, That's a dope movie. And then they go, yeah, and we're and I'm thinking about this one, but I, I want to generate by your applause. He goes, they live. And then we, everybody started cheering yeah, for that. I'm like, that's a classic. I told Patrick and Amador, look at me, we're going to that, right? Like, and then I was like, but we all have to have like that blue flannel, like Rowdy Roddy Piper did. You know, we have to like dress with that mullet. <laughs> that reminds me, you know what horror movie from back in the day? And it's so bad, but I love it. <laughs> it's The Stuff. The Stuff. Have you ever seen that movie? So I don't think so. Everybody starts eating this yogurt. It's like a white yogurt. Uh huh. And it's this new, it has all the nutrition you need, blah, blah, blah. But you, It's but got electrolytes? This, yeah, it's got <laughs> electrolytes. Except for the, the main character is a kid. Mm-hmm. He's like maybe 13. And he doesn't eat it. I don't know. I don't remember why at first. He just doesn't eat it. Then he starts noticing that it's the only thing people are eating now. And everyone suddenly is becoming obsessed with him trying it. And he's like, ah, oh, fuck you. I don't want that. And his parents are basically trying to kill him because he, they won't eat this fucking yogurt. And there's one scene where he opens the the fridge and all you see is the containers of the stuff. Like that's the only <laughs> thing in the fridge. So he It's like you that know, Star Trek episode when Wesley doesn't want to take that the, yeah, the game. Yeah, it's exact exactly like that. And then he he's fucking on his little bike and he goes to the factory where they make the stuff and they you find out that it's actually it comes from the center of the earth. And it's this like primordial fucking entity and it's 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 taking over the minds of people and shit and there's a scene <laughs> where like I, I think it was the dad but it was just some dude and and the stuff like eats him from the inside out like that's the thing and it's all oozing out of his eyes this movie is so bad <laughs> but i will watch it anytime it used to come on um i think it was cinemax back in the day like in that late night horror which one of them had a late night horror bit yeah, I think it was Cinemax. Play, yeah, they used to play shit horror movies. Yeah, before they I went to before time. they went to porn. Right, and thank God. Yeah, really. actually, I ordered them. Um, I have HBO now through Hulu, and um, I'm like, oh yeah, this is great. I'm showing my wife. I'm like, look, and I, I at this point, I had only used it to watch Game of Thrones. <laughs> like that's all I've used it for. Uh-huh. So I just I, I go to Hulu and click Game of Thrones and search, and it would just come up. So. My, my wife's like, this is 15 bucks. Like, she's kind of like, eh, to watch one show, you know? And I'm like, okay, well, let's, let's see what That's where you go, on you don't show. understand. Right. <laughs> it's not to watch one show. It's to watch the show, okay? Calm <laughs> yeah, down. Get your, get your facts together. Um, so I went to the thing, and, and they have different tabs, and then there's one late night. I was like, oops. <laughs> <laughs> so I need, I need to find a way to uh, block that. <laughs> um, so the kids aren't like, what's late night? Oh, my God. <laughs> It's that soft core shit. Right. I should just let them watch it. Yeah, you know, I mean, it, shit's gonna happen, you know. Right. <laughs> we were talking about that at work. Soft core porn versus hardcore, and and they were soft core like, is difference? funny. Yeah, it's funny. It has more storyline in it. Shit. Yeah. They said, "What's the difference?" I said, "Well, soft core, there isn't penetration. Like right. you basically, if the chick's on top, she's fucking the shit out of his belly button. Yeah, she's yeah, she's like, or she's grinding the shit out of her belly, his belly button. Right. It's just an act." And they're like, oh, so hardcore is penetration. I'm like, well, hardcore can be a lot of different things. It depends on what you're watching. <laughs> it could be a lot of different places for penetration. <laughs> you go to Pornhub lately, and the most common things that people are watching are incest porn and fucking punishment porn. I'm like, what is wrong with everyone? 
Because everybody's like, a whiner, so they got to look for the Jesus other side. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Sex is supposed to be fun. It's not supposed to hurt. <laughs> Settle down. Well, I don't know. It depends on some people, you know? My friend sent me a link to one porn. That's the last thing I'll say about porn. Um, he sent me a link to this for the for the next ten minutes. <laughs> right. He says, "Check this porn out." And I'm like, "All right, whatever. I'm a dude." My <laughs> wife's in the room. I'm like, "Hey, you want to check this porn out?" So I threw it up on the TV. All the kids are asleep, by the way, uh-huh. just to you know full disclosure. <laughs> and um, we put it on, and, and it's these two. This is there's a storyline. The chick and the dude. Chick was hot as shit. I was like, "Oh shit!" Like they stepping a game up with these porn stars, <laughs> and um, they're arguing. And then the, the argument's getting worse and worse, and he fucking slaps her. Oh, shit. And I, I swear he really slapped her because they don't have the production value to, to edit that in. Like, it looked right. like he really, there was a mark on her face and everything. And then they start fucking, but they're, he's beating the shit out of her. While the, and I'm like, what is this? And then my wife started crying because she's, you know, a little bit of history. You know what I mean? Mm. So I'm like, fucking Jesus. I turned this off. I told my friend, never send me anything again. <laughs> He's like, I thought it was funny. And I'm like, you need fucking professional help. Because I don't watch that. I can't, I can't watch women be mistreated. Like it, or children. It fucking bothers me, man. You know, I don't know how people can. But you know what? To each his own. Do what you got to do. Mm-hmm. Anyway, moving on to softer things. Like softcore porn. <laughs> so, right. not, uh, <laughs> so about softcore. You know? <laughs> right. So... I have been working a lot of overtime because, and those who get paid every other week, which is very common, you'll know that there are, I think, two months a year that you will get paid three times. Yeah, the, the 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 much uh, appreciated three month pay period. The the magical one year it was on December. I was like, oh, the the gods have smiled on me today. <laughs> um, so <Look>. that <coughs> whoa, I looked geez. up from your desk and went, oh, right. <laughs> So, <coughs> one of the months for me this year is September. So, my the I'm getting paid on the first. So the pay period ended on Friday. So the last two weeks I've been working super overtime. I worked sixty hours a week. So it's twelve hour days, one hundred twenty hours total. So I'm I'm not fucking around. And the cool thing is the last check. So this is the best. This is the best thing. The last check of the month, which is the extra check, they don't take health insurance out of that because oh, you right. you sign up for it to take out B- twice yeah, a month. Twice a month, right? By um, yeah, was it bi weekly? Right. Yeah. My health insurance, um, and all my other like medical and all that in there, totals about six hundred dollars a check because Jeez. I have such a big family. So that's a little extra change. I'm like, fuck this. I'm doing overtime this whole month. I ain't playing games. Bro, I was so fucking tired on Friday. Like, it, it's just exhausting. And I, I get out on Friday. Usually when I when I leave work, I clean my desk. I, I get like a fucking wipe and clean my desk. And I put everything away because I like to come in with clean workspace, no issue. My homie calls me. I don't even remember leaving work on Friday. <laughs> my homie hits me up I work with hey bro I cleaned your desk and I'm like what and he's like you left all the drawers open <laughs> papers on the floor like shit was just a mess I was like what the fuck I was like alright well thanks good looking out so then fucking um, so I get some I finally get some sleep because I don't sleep very well I, I I usually go to bed 12 or 1 I can't I can't go to sleep before that unless I'm about to pass out so I was getting like 4 or 5 hours of sleep at night so <laughs> I slept eight hours solid on uh, Friday night, and I was dead. My wife said she tried to wake me up, and she basically hit me, and I, I didn't even move. <laughs> Still in a fog, right? And this right. is going to roll right into my next thing on the uh, roundtable topic. A computer, a computer breaks, which it, I'll go into more detail if you listen to the Just Another podcast, which will be out this week as well. Yeah, will be out um, on Friday. Right. So computer breaks. So I'm working on that. I got to rebuild the whole fucking thing. It doesn't work the first time. I got to rebuild the whole fucking thing again. Then my computer had Linux on it, which I think I said last last uh, podcast. And that was only a temporary thing. I just needed to get a USB drive. That where it's complicated. There's just some shit. <laughs> so I, I get Windows 10. I'm like, cool. Let's let's reinstall Windows 10. 
And <laughs> so the screen comes up. If you ever install Windows 10, you know what I'm talking about. Comes up and it shows the uh, the drives that you have in the system. Mine are two. One is my backup drive, and one is my SD drive that I put my operating system on. And my daughter, my sweet, sweet daughter, <laughs> I was telling her to take May a shower. May she rest in peace. <laughs> right. I was telling her to take a shower, and she was, you know, doing a kid's shit. You know, dragging her feet, you know, fucking off. So I'm yelling. I turn, and I go, will you get your ass in the shower? Now, my backup drive was highlighted, and I was gonna switch it but then i just instinctively turned and hit delete this motherfucker don't give you a warning prompt Uh -uh. nothing i deleted my entire backup drive we're talking gigs of shit so i instantly go into category categorizing what i just lost like uh fuck 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 lost all the books i had lost comic books any backups i had um videos uh, movies, all of this was obtained legally. You can't prove anything. Um, <laughs> programs, software, everything. The only thing I didn't lose, a few books because they were on OneDrive, and um, all my family photos were on OneDrive, which is good because that's really the only thing that's that important. I can't replace those. Um, so, yeah, that was fun. <laughs> and then focusing for 30 minutes to not scream at Ava because it really wasn't Ava's fault. It was Ava's fault, right. but I'm just I'm just saying, you know, I didn't want to go out there and go, you motherfucker, <laughs> you know what you just baby to? <laughs> You're never going to college. <laughs> Get out of my fucking house. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, that was my weekend. Just fucking technical difficulties all weekend, but now everything's lovely. We got the computers back up. Well, a computers back up. And my computer is super smooth with that Windows 10 motherfucker. <laughs> um, we good to go. Damn. Yeah, I remember he he, <laughs> he messaged me yesterday, and bullshit. Cause like yesterday, well, cause when I I went to go see um, uh, Roadhouse Friday night, so it was a midnight show. We didn't get out of there till like 2.30. And then I ended up hanging out with um, my buddy. We went over to Denny's afterwards. So I didn't get home till like 5 in the morning. And so, of course, you know, I'm kind of out of it a little bit. Like sleeping, waking up. And, you know, and then he texts me that. And I'm like, oh, fuck. And I thought I text you like this whole thing about like, oh, shit. What are you going to do? Like all these like random things. And then. And then I look and I was just like, and I looked at my phone afterwards, like, I wonder why you didn't text back. And then I looked at, I think I only sent you like, oh, damn, or something like that. Yeah, something that, that was kind of cold blooded too. Cause I, I fucking said, I said, damn, I, I lost everything. And, and you know, for, for a geek, right. it's a big deal for a minute. Yeah. You know what I mean? And all the homie <laughs> text me back was, damn. I'm like, this condescending piece of shit. <laughs> Like, and I'm sitting there thinking to myself, I was actually mumbling to myself because, you know, I was already pissed off. Right. I was like, man, if he lost his jump, his fucking backup, I'd be over here with a candlelight vigil. This motherfucker <laughs> ain't no real friend. He's a bitch over here. Fuck this motherfucker. <laughs> uh, but I was, but, you know, I was like kind of in a haze on and off all day because, you know, I didn't really get like a full, like I slept for like three hours and then woke up and then slept for right. like an hour, woke up. And so it was just. You know, like this today, I slept. Oh God, I slept for like maybe like ten or eleven hours straight, and uh, then I was and like today I'm fine. But yeah, I looked at it yesterday. I was just like, oh shit, <laughs> I got that kind of sucks. <laughs> <laughs> so, but uh, yeah, I know. I was like, I remember when I did. I remember when I deleted all the old shows off my off my external hard drive. I was just so pissed when I lost like a bunch of our old shows. Right and uh, still had a copies of a of a few of them, but I was just like, "Fuck, man!" It just, like, it, you and this is a it's a testament. And my mistake, and Steve was very quick to point it out. And this is real friendship, where the first thing you do when your friend makes a mistake is point out what where he fucked up. Right. <laughs> He's like, "Why didn't you have that shit synced to OneDrive?" And I'm like, "God damn it!" Like you know, because I should have had it. So now I have the backup drive. I had I reformatted it. Um, and I made the entire drive synced to my entire OneDrive. Like, that's it. Right. So whatever goes on that drive goes right to OneNote or OneDrive. 
yeah not one note that'd be weird um <laughs> and i reorganized my one drive and all that because i get, what do we have i got like a terabyte and a half or something yeah. of space I, yeah on i got some so. like a terabyte and i i still have like i still have like 70 percent because basically everything that i do in OneDrive, because i have the OneDrive app on my phone and my and my ipad so for me a lot of times i don't save literally save anything on my computer anymore like if i'm say i create the file and then when i save it i save it immediately right into OneDrive because it's easy for me and it saved my ass a couple of times where i was on my phone going oh shit you know like sending out an application or something like that and like, oh, I want to update that. I can just kind of dip in onto my OneDrive and then get it there and then send it off. But uh, yeah, and, and I've had those times where it's just like, computer just fucked up and I lost a bunch of shit that was on there. And I was like, fuck, I'm never doing that again. And I'm never going to have that again. So, but yeah, yeah. <laughs> so he's just like, and then he tells me earlier before the show, he was like, man, he goes, and I, I had this list on there that was everything that I needed to download for the show. And I lost it. I had it color coded and everything. I'm like, well, why don't you put it in OneDrive or uh, OneNote? He's like, thanks a fucking lot. Thank you. Right. <laughs> I was like, I'm just saying, you know, we have other shit put in there. <laughs> Might as well. Thanks, that. Captain Obvious. You know, it's, just, <laughs> it's that thing where it's like, you know, it's a lesson learned. And and the thing that pissed me off most about it is I know better. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like I tell it's other, just, you get people. you get lazy, and I, I exactly. get that. I get that exactly. Like I tell other people all the time, you ain't got your backup right. Living stupid over there, mother, being <laughs> shit right. And here's me, fucking up. <laughs> we all have to fall from fall from heaven at some point. We all have a cross to bear. <laughs> right. You know. <laughs> all right, so I guess it's time we move into our one awesome thing. So my one awesome thing, as we get closer to the end of the month, it's an exciting time for Xbox Live Gold subscribers because we get to see what games are coming out for free in the coming month. This this September seems to be a pretty awesome month for gamers with a healthy mix of games. The Racing Game of the Year edition of Forza Motorsport 5, which was originally released in November 2013 as an Xbox One launch title, will be free all month long. Forza 5 introduced concepts such as a Drivatar and AI based uh, on your actual driving behavior in the game. Uh, September's other Xbox One title for Gold subscribers is Oxenfree, a teenage adventure game from Night Studio, Night School Studios, and it'll be available free from September 16th through the 15th. And it's kind of a choose your own adventure kind of game. I was watching the video for it on um, um, on the Lazy Geeks, and um, it looks like something I may actually want to try. It looks kind of cool. Uh, for the 360 front. Hydro Thunder Hurricane will be free from September for September 1st through the 15th. Hydro Thunder Hurricane is Vector Unit's 2010 sequel to the aquatic racing game. It launched in 2010 on, on Xbox Live Arcade. And during the second half of the month, gold subscribers can download EA Dice's Battlefield 3, the modern yeah. military shooter that debuted in 2011 for free. As always, both games are playable on Xbox One via 360's backwards compatibility. Uh, there are still four, there are still a couple days left in the month. Gold members can still download two of August's games, Trial Vision, um, Trial Vision, and Red Faction Armageddon. And it's cool because I actually have Battlefield Three for the 360, so I was like, oh sweet, I can download it for the Xbox, uh, or I can just drop it in for compatibility <laughs> for backwards compatibility. Right. So I'm like, oh nice. So that's kind of cool. So it's actually, it's been kind of quiet the last couple of months on both the Xbox and. Well, I think really Xbox has. had Xbox had what an Assassin's Creed, one of those Assassin's Creed games. Yeah, but I mean, and, there's so many fucking Assassin's Creed games that you could throw them up every month. No one would give a shit. Yeah, and nobody you will know? know that they're you know they'll be like, oh, that's that's a new one. Okay, <laughs> exactly. So my one awesome thing, I don't know. I remember talking about this before, but Divinity Original Sin, the first one, love that game. It, it's a it's it's in the style of the old school D and D games. Video games, very very complex, uh, a lot of voice acting, but not not voice acting everywhere. But it was there, and, and it, it's it's one of those like completely open game, you can really do anything, and it's single player. Fuck this MMO shit, I'm done with it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so Divinity Original Sin Two is getting English voice acting ahead of its release on September 14th. Develop developer uh, Larian Studios announced the game's entire cast of roughly 1,200 characters and creatures will be fully voiced. 
with more than 74,000 lines of dialogue and over 1 million words. This massive undertaking, which Larian Studios previously said would be too difficult to pull off, required the help of roughly 80 different voice actors. Five of the actors are Harry Hayden Payton from Dragon Age Inquisition as the Red Prince, a heroic lizard uh, exile from, from his own empire. Uh, Alec Newman from Battlefield 1 as a rebel turned pirate named Beast. Um, Tamarian Payne from Game of Thrones, a Telltale Game series as Los, a star musician. musician. And uh, Alex, <coughs> Alex spelt with an X. Stop it. Just stop it. <laughs> Alex Wilton Reagan, Dragon Age Inquisition, as the Elven Assassin Sebel, and Chris Finney from Mass Effect Andromeda as Ifen Ben Mizd, a uh, mercenary ex soldier on the run. So, due to the sheer amount of voice content, Larian Studios notes players have to go through the, the game multiple times in order to listen to all the dialogue and, and hear every NPC's story. Uh, Divinity Original Sin 2 has been in early access on Steam since September 2016 after its successful Kickstarter campaign in 2015 and has been receiving regular updates ever since. This got me super excited. So when you're playing a game that's supposed to be of the scope of a... And, and Dungeons... This isn't a Dungeons & Dragons game. It's just done in that scope. And when it's in that scope, the, the more voice acting, the better. Because it immerses you in the story a lot better and stuff like that. Um, and to hear that everything is voice acted, bruh, got me fucking, I was like, what? So I'm super excited for this. Um, yeah, it's super nerdy. I don't give a fuck. Uh, <laughs> get on my level, you know, whatever. So, <laughs> <laughs> And if we're too nerdy for you, why are you listening? Exactly. <laughs> exactly. All right. All right, so our main topic this week will be about the craziness of the DC Cinematic Universe. But before all that, let's talk about some headlines. So in entertainment news this week, one of the biggest things about an overhyped show is that the that the hype still undersold how great a show was. Uh, Stranger Things was one of those shows. When it debuted back in the summer of 2016, people could not get enough of the show. It personally took me until the holidays of 2016 to actually watch the whole thing. So the buildup of season two is immense and, uh, and it's gonna be a hard thing to live up to. However, it seems that we will only have a pair of seasons after the second season. During an interview with Vulture, they mentioned that they've already been renewed for a third season, which bodes well for fans. However, it would seem that the limit as far as the series will go, and that number is four. Quote, uh, one of the producers, Matt, I don't know if we can justify something bad happening to them once a year. Ross, we're thinking that it will be a four season thing and then out. And then they're going to have to get the fuck out of the town. It's ridiculous. Uh, while most fans will complain about series not lasting long, we've seen over and over again when great shows go on a little too long. Lost is a great example. Netflix series seem to run about five seasons, and many cable series usually run about five seasons. Many times it's due to budgetary constraints because the amount of money to produce the series grows and the budget um, allotment shrinks. The Duffers, quote, wanted to push a bit push things a bit, end quote, for season two. They don't consider the next chunk of episodes as a follow-up season, but more like a movie sequel that's, quote, a bit bigger, end quote. Having, the, having a set end date is good for the creator and fans. They will be able to plan it out and hopefully bring it to a satisfying conclusion. I'm really, I'm really looking forward to season two because season one, you know, like a lot of things, it, I think I watched the first episode, like, Around the time it came out, and I was kind of like, ah, it seems kind of cool. And then it just kind of fell off my radar. But then around the holidays, uh, I I, st I wanted to kind of, like, I'm, I'm going to watch it. You know, it was only like, I think, eight episodes. It's like, I was gonna, I'm going to watch it. And then, you know, my brother kind of sat in, and we watched it, and we binged it in like two days. And, right. you know, eight episodes with my brother to actually sit down for, you know, that period of time. It's, it's pretty impressive. You know, he doesn't do that a lot. Uh, but, uh, yeah, so it's one of those things where I'm look, definitely looking forward to season two. Um, can't wait for that. And, and to kind of have, like, okay, cool, if it goes four, that means they can kind of just, you know, go straight for straight to the wall. And just, you know, and, and, and then at least then 
hopefully, you know, if season two is as good as season one, which usually isn't, but still good. It's like, okay, at least now they can plan how to stretch it out to, to those four seasons. Yeah, I really need to check out this show. Um, you, people keep... you, it's, there's a lot of geek in there, a lot of 80s references to one another. Right. So I, I think you would you would dig it. Just so much shit to watch, yeah, dude. I know. Like, like, I'm trying to catch up on Game of Thrones, and I'm on the end of the second season, and I just... It's, it's, Game of Thrones is a heavy show. Yeah. So it's difficult to watch that constantly at least for me like i i want to take a break from it and do something different you know what i mean and it's like people pissed off at me because i haven't seen the whole thing i'm like get the fuck away they, they used to happen to me with uh breaking bad too everybody oh, yeah. wanted me to watch breaking bad and i watched the first few episodes and i didn't like it it just wasn't for me you know i don't I, it's yeah he's he's a drug dealer now cool like i, I didn't i don't know it didn't tickle me i guess but um there's so many shows like that that people just freak out about and then they get physically pained that someone else isn't watching it. It's like, Jesus Christ. <laughs> one of us. One of <laughs> know, us. Right? You, know? you know, so it's like that movie. <laughs> you know? Right. <laughs> so some very lucky critics have gotten the first look at um, Andreas Muschietti's It. Nope. Um, and they are sharing... What? I said nope. <laughs> and they are sharing some spoiler-free reactions. Uh, which apparently go from very scary to just plain awesome. The remake was already on track to earn $60 million on its debut weekend, uh, but the early, overwhelmingly positive reviews might make all those record-breaking projections even higher. The early critical reaction has just jumped the hype meter up about 10 notches. An amazing feat, because it didn't seem possible for the excitement of the upcoming IT remake uh, to get any higher. The critics who were able to check out the early screenings screening have been taken to social media or have taken <laughs> I read it correctly they did it wrong to social media to humble brag as well as share their thoughts on the big screen adaptation of Stephen King's it um, so I'm just gonna read I'm not I don't know there's, there's just a bunch of twitters Twitter, a bunch of tweets <laughs> um, so this one was on Finn Wolfhide's performance uh, who I forget who he is. It is a. I'm gonna say every time this this movie pisses me off because it's called it. <laughs> so every time I say it, I'm gonna go it. Like I'm gonna stress it. That means I'm talking about the fucking movie. The title. Um. Right. It is a very handsome, polished execution of a story you know inside out. The big surprise it's been Wolfhard really earns the spot. Um. I'm just gonna read the tweets. I'm not gonna read who put them because nobody gives a shit. Um. Saw it. I loved it. <laughs> See, that's what it pissed me off. Saw it. I loved it. Um, then took trash out in my empty dock stairwell. Shit freaked me out because that movie scared me like for real. Um, <laughs> it is creepy, bloody, super funny, adorably romantic, and hands down among my favorite movies of the year. Uh, another one felt a poltergeist meets the monster squad vibe. A great e- example of a film where its eye rating elevates it in all the best ways. So, there was one. First of all, I hate when people use the word handsome like that. Like, I know it's, I know it's technically correct, but it just sounds dumb. Just saying. There was one that said like, um, that never has he seen a movie where children are in so much violent and disturbing danger. And then he said he loved it. And I went, that's. Your your comments questionable. Right. <laughs> You're gonna get a phone call. Um, but yeah, the the one one thing is um, the person who plays Pennywise, which I thought I had. Oh, um, his name his last name is Skazgard. Um, they're saying that he's a breakout role. Like he did an amazing fucking job. Because if you really think about it. You're 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 up against one of the greats for who played the original it. Oh, yeah. Remind Tim Curry. me, Tim Curry. Thank you. I'm so bad with names. Um, and that's that's some pretty big clown shoes to fill. <laughs> <laughs> I saw what um, you did there. And there's that, and then there's also the character himself. The character of it is very complex, you know. So it's it's not an easy role, you know. And I, and when they were talking about the remake of this, first of all, I, I at first I didn't want to remake. I'm like, no, stop remaking everything, you know. Right. But then I'm like, all right, well, whatever. Um, and then 
you you think about uh somebody doing that role because because the character is, is funny yeah he's he's brutal and violent and sadistic and all that stuff but he's funny like because he's a clown he's supposed to, he's supposed to be having fun just think of he's your the supervisor. only one exactly <laughs> he's the only one that's laughing right. but he's funny <laughs> um uh, Steve and I have both agreed we will never see this movie. Um, I nope. can't. I have a. I don't. Well, one, I'm not really into horror movies, um, unless they're like 80s slasher, like goofing around. But I, I don't like the new trend, and I can't really include this movie into this new trend because obviously this is an old story. And res- big, big respect to Stephen King. Cause you know he keeps it real in those stories. But um, I, there's a new trend in Hollywood with horror movies where kids are always in danger kids are dying kids are being possessed kids 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 i i don't like watching kids be fucked it's just it's a personal thing and it bothers me i just don't like it you know so i'm seeing some of the still images of this fucking the it clown scaring the piss out of me right now i mean looking behind me and shit yeah when i when i when i saw some of those by the way you can see those tweets on the link in the show notes um but when i when i saw some of those i was like yeah nope because i saw the original one and the original one scared me enough I was like, I don't, I don't really need it. I don't really need it anymore. And plus, I'm also not into, yeah, like horror movies or jump scares. I'm, I'm not big into that. But, but see, this is it. This is a movie that will scare me because it's not jump scares. Like, yeah. there's a couple jump scares. In, like, if I'm thinking about the original, in yeah. the original, there's a couple of jump scares. You know, the head in the fridge, just silly shit like that. But it's a psychological mind fuck. Yeah. And and a lot of people because they didn't really explain it too much in the original. I don't know how much they go into it in the new one. But the character of it is is a really has a deep history. It's supposed to, and it's like a an ancient evil yeah. that you know this and that. They, they did kind of mention they did they, the they did they kind of mention it in the in the trailer. In one of the trailers that I saw, they did kind of mention about the about it being an old spirit. But yeah, it's it's enough for me to just still go nope. Yeah, I'm good. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm I'm good, y'all. I hope everyone has a good time. Right, um, but I will not be joining. <laughs> All right, so moving on into gaming news, it's very hard to figure out what Nintendo is trying to do. It would seem that much of to this to the surprise of their fan base, pre-orders of the SNES Classic Edition went online Tuesday. Now, if you were if you had the luck of being a night owl, you may have managed to get the pre-order through Best Buy or Amazon since they went online at midnight Eastern time. But it seems that Nintendo did not learn anything from their previous venture last year. Pre-orders of the console seem to be scattered across retailers, mostly due to the fact that there was no set time to offer pre-orders. Later in the day, Walmart and Target offered pre-orders and quickly sold out. GameStop went live, but their site was difficult to get to according to GameSpot. GameStop said, was even asking consumers to try their ThinkGeek sites. Other issues with the pre-order is that if you tried to pre-order through a physical GameStop, you would be hard-pressed to find any available. If many, as many of um, weren't taking physical um, taking pre-orders yet, because they didn't know how many they would, um, how many would be available to them. Not only that, if you managed to find one that was taking pre-orders, it was only offering bundles. Bundles ranged from one thirty nine ninety nine, which garnered you the console, but a Tetris lamp and a Super Mario canteen, to two forty nine, which gave you a Mega Man helmet and a Proto Man Buster. And for that price, you just save an extra fifty, and you can order, pre-order yourself a Nintendo Switch. Uh, it would seem that false hope that consumers clung to when Nintendo said that they weren't going to make the same mistake this time around was true, as Jess Goldblum said in Jurassic Park: The Lost World. No, you just made all new ones. Now, if you manage to get one on pre-order, please let us know in in the comments on the podcast on the website to the story links in the show notes because we want to hear you know how it went for you and and all of that. So yeah, were we surprised? No, no, I, I wasn't no. surprised. You know, I mean, it's it's. Uh... I mean, even when I said in the story that that was talking about like Nintendo saying, "Oh yeah, we you know we learned from that," blah 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 blah. And I was like, "Yeah," but I doubt it. <laughs> <laughs> you know right like it's and and with with how the clusterfuck of the nes classic because it because when they first announced it i was like oh that's cool and it, it kind of tugged on my nostalgia strings a little bit you know i was like oh maybe i'll try to get one and then i was like oh never mind and then that just further cemented the fact that it's not a necessary device yeah you know like i would you rather can, work hard to get an original nes 
Super Straight NES up. And I mean, NES. you can hit eBay up. We're talking 50, maybe 100 bucks. You can get a whole NES system. They got websites, third party websites that sell you the um, replacement parts for the system. You can keep the NES going forever. You know, so it's why like who, just whatever yeah. you know i'm kind of i'm kind of thinking about getting that old nes and showing showing my kids the fucking struggle oh hell yeah like for real because these games were no joke and if, if you're if you're an 80s kid or a 70s kid you know the fucking struggle because oh, yeah. that shit no re- no save points no respawn no no, no sir uh-uh. so on to more modern consoles um <laughs> With Xbox One X on the not-so-distant horizon, it appears Microsoft has stopped selling the original Xbox One in favor of shifting its entire sales focus to the S and X models. Microsoft's UK online store lists the console as sold out, while its US store only has lists for a refurbished version. The company ceased manufacturing of the original Xbox One several months ago, but until now, the console was still available for purchase through Microsoft's online store. IGN has reached out to Microsoft for comment and will provide an update if we receive a response. So if they provide an update, I'll provide an update. Um, this isn't particularly surprising given the impending arrival of Xbox One X, which set a new pre-order record for the company as well as as well as upcoming Minecraft as well as upcoming Minecraft and Shadow of War Xbox One S bundles, which were unveiled earlier this week at Gamescom. First of all, before I even get into this, the X, the the Minecraft Xbox One edition is dope as shit. It looks like a, a block of grass yeah. from Minecraft. It's so fucking slick. My kids are like, "Can we get it?" I'm like, "Fuck you! We already got an Xbox." Get a um, job. <laughs> I, I I get it. Like, okay, we have a new Xbox out. We don't need to sell the old one, but that new one's like 500 bills, isn't mm-hmm. it? Mm-hmm. So it's like, you know what I mean? Like, well, what are we doing here? So, but I guess Microsoft's probably on the vein of. Everyone who wanted an Xbox One already got one. Yeah, which I can see, I can understand that too. Yeah, Amador said that he uh, he pre-ordered the the One X, um, but he's doing it on he goes that I think it was GameStop that was doing kind of a cool thing where you want to trade it in, you get a voucher, and so you still so when the Xbox One X does come out, you then bring in the console and oh then yeah, trade GameStop it in. always does that shit. Yeah, so they'll do that. They'll do that deal for like six months through too. Yeah. Like you can get the new one if you um if you trade in. That's that's how I got um the Xbox One, my Xbox One. Mm-hmm. I traded in my 360, and they dropped. Oh, it was slick though. So real quick, I had a PS3 and an Xbox 360, and um it didn't specifically say there was a limit on how many consoles you could trade in. <laughs> and I'm like, ha, motherfucker, I got you, because I know there is, but it didn't say it. Right. So I brought the ad in, and I brought my two consoles in. And I was like, so what's up? Like, um, you said you trade in the console, get $100 credit. It's like, oh, well, it's only for one console. I'm like, oh, that's weird. It doesn't say that on here. And you give that look mm-hmm. like we about to dance, motherfucker. <laughs> they, they just said, fuck it. They gave me 200 bones off that shit. Nice. I was like, oh, what the fuck? Is? The dude behind me was steady pissed. He was hating, dude. I was like, fuck you, man. You need to work that game. Yeah. I'm trying to make some money up in here. So. <laughs> And I traded in some games, too, just to add insult to injury. <laughs> <laughs> I think I paid, like, because I, I traded in controllers, games, um, the Xbox 360, the the um, PS3. I, I think I my Xbox One cost me, like, 60 bucks. Oh, damn. And that was launch. <laughs> so, whoop, whoop. Motherfucker. Oh, <laughs> uh, man. So, moving on into comic book news. Uh, if you were with us this week, you would have seen the two preview, um, preview covers for the upcoming DC Comics Doomsday Clock number one. Uh, as we are approaching September, you know we'll be seeing a lot more teases since the event is expected to kick off in November. So on Tuesday, DC revealed the third cover that will be a lenticular motion variant cover. And it would seem that we're getting our first glimpse of Rorschach being introduced into the DC Universe. So now this bears the question... Will they introduce the characters into the DC Universe take place before the events of the original Watchmen series? Or um, So I guess we'll have to see. But in this, we uh, see the Bloodstained Happy... Because we've seen the Bloodstained Happy Pin in uh, Batman's Cave. But if you look at the lenticular cover, it is the Rorschach symbol. But it has Superman, Wonder Woman, and Batman's logo in it. Which I always call the Holy Trinity. 
so as we're only seeing one image according to CBR, the image we're seeing is the beginning is the beginning or the end, but whatever it is, it doesn't really seem to be relevant at this point, uh, except to me, I guess. <laughs> so as we um, as we know as we know it. Um, it is Rorschach, so it'll be curious to see, you know, what the blot um, would become or originally was. Doomsday Clock event begins in November. So. Yeah, I can't wait for that. I, th- I have a feeling it's going to be pretty dope. Yeah, I mean, it's finally going to answer the whole rebirth thing, we're hoping. So it'll be cool to see, like, you know, that it was Dr. Manhattan fucking around. Right. Maybe his maybe his incredible dong got in the way and just kind of accidentally hit the reset button. <laughs> you know, people are saying that they're going to say Dr. Manhattan's a god. I think Dr. Manhattan's not a god. Dr. Manhattan's fucking dick is a god. Oh, That's yeah, absolutely. That's what I think. So anyway. I mean, it does create life, right? Oh. <laughs> it would seem that Warner Brothers cannot do anything in the DC universe without an involving Batman at some point. Under an unnamed banner, uh, Warner Brothers is looking to do a new movie focusing on the origin of the Joker. Uh, the banner that was mentioned comes from Deadline that states um, that the film will be out of continue. Conti- I hate this fucking word. Continuity? Thank you. <laughs> I don't know why. Every time I see it, I want to say continue. <laughs> so it fucks me up. Um, be out of continuity of the current slate of DC properties. The other reason that this is receiving some press is based on the fact that The Hangovers taught Phillips to co-write a script with 8 Mile scribe Scott Silver. Phillips will direct the movie, and Martin Scorsese will produce uh, it with Phillips. You may remember that back in June, rumors were swirling about being... Ugh! Rumors were swirling around about a Red Sun movie possibly being in development. Uh, these types of movies would be interesting and great to tell, but there there tends to be a problem with these movies. While people in the comic book world would get it, there are there are many in the in the movie going public that simply wouldn't understand how this works. Um, and that's true. Like they'll see Red Sun and go, "Wait, what happened to Superman?" Yeah. Like they're not going to understand that it's a different. Well, does thing. this take place before the mo- the last one, or is it take place after this? What does it do? And Red Sun is so fucking dope. Oh, dude. It's so dope. Um, Fox did this with Logan, which everyone understood served as Hugh Jackman's final run in the role. The character could come back, but will feature a new actor in the role. With Jared Leto coming back into more movies, it would seem that it would confuse an audience member, wondering just when it takes place and how it fits in. Marvel has made sure they do not run into this problem, in as much as many of their stories exist within the same universe, And if they choose to be outside of the sphere of influence, then you would have movies like Guardians of the Galaxy. Uh... (laughs) This is actually Steve's article, and for some reason, I have a hard time reading his article. I can read everything else, but I can't read Steve's. I don't know why. Um, (laughs) On the flip side, what origin would they use for the Joker anyway? And that's a good question. While many writers have tried to make the origin of the Joker the best pot of this origin is that he doesn't really have one. too many times studios think that they that we need an origin story of all the characters but the sad fact is that not everyone has one. given how the joker was treated in suicide squad uh faith in their development is weak on a personal level this is steve's personal level it needs to be the killing joke or nothing at all ah <laughs> straight up um yeah the cool thing about the joker is that and they really they really um played played with this in the Dark Knight, mm-hmm. where he has all these origin stories that have been written by different people over the years, and it's become this thing where the Joker doesn't even know his origin story. Like he's so far down the rabbit hole, he doesn't know what's true anymore. Well, it's that maybe like, have I told you how I got these scars? Exactly, and it's always a different fucking story. Mm-hmm. And every it, if you, maybe you don't know this, but every story he told is true. Yeah, it just depends on what what you were reading, right? You know, so it's um, which was a great. A great way to do it because then you're like wait he just said a totally different one earlier oh yeah that's because he's crazy <laughs> yeah this is a fucking nut job um do we need an origin story no we really don't and and they're most likely just going to do the one that from killing joe probably because that's the only one that's the most fleshed out yeah um but honestly the the um the killing joke origin isn't even that good if you really think about it because it tries to 
it tries to add sympathy yeah for the joker and there is no sympathy for the joker there doesn't need to be it makes it a softer character and that's not the point of the character the point he is he is the embodiment of chaos you're not supposed to feel sorry for chaos right which is what i think the dark knight got right especially when you had uh michael kane just saying that infamous line some people just wanted to watch the world burn because it's like it's telling you that not every person has to have you know an an, uh, a softer side or a real side it's like no they're just some people that are fucking crazy but in this society of you know oh you know everybody you know is this way because they weren't held enough or they weren't it's like no some people can just be fucking crazy and like they tried to do an origin story for nicholson's joker um Mm -hmm. but you didn't feel sorry for him because he was already a fucking gangster you know what i mean so it's just whatever um i can't there's so many there's there's like at least five origin stories of the joker at least Hmm. you know and and uh, most of them revolve around the red hood yeah but they're just different variations of it um i just it's not necessary nobody cares what the origin of the joker is yeah just because he's the only reason everyone all dc fans intrinsically know that the reason the joker exists is because batman exists yeah and vice versa they're they're yin and yang that's the same thing with bane oh yeah yeah and they tried with Bane too, silly ass origin shit. You know what I mean? So it's it's just like who fucking cares? Rob, you wonder why we shoot the man. <laughs> I love that fucking movie, dude. A lot of people were harping on it, but I dug it. I dug it. I, I just thought was, it was a little long. It was a little long. Yeah. Um, but that was the best Bane I've ever seen. Yeah, that was like good. out of and I'm including <laughs> cartoons and everything. Oh, I was gonna was say, I was gonna so say, dope. but then giving compare that we're comparing it to Batman and Robin, not necessarily a high threshold, you know. Yeah, where they just used him as muscle, he yeah, had no gap whatsoever. <laughs> All right, so into tech news. These 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 tech two tech stores are going to probably be a little bit long, but we don't. I don't really expect our discussion store to be that long, so I think we'll probably be okay. Um, so. As expected, Samsung announced their new Samsung Galaxy Note 8. Sexy motherfucker is what it should be called. Uh, From the above video, which you can see on the LazyGeeks.com, you can see that they are going full out on this device without dwelling too much on last year's doomed model. It is nice to see that Samsung simply cut their losses and worked on the next model. Keep in mind that it is nearly a year without a Note device on the market. There were many naysayers on the web that didn't see think Samsung could bounce back, but they did with the Galaxy S8 and S8 Plus. So, really quick, what here are the specs for the Note 8, if you haven't already heard them. Uh, display, 6.3 inch Quad HD Plus, so that's 2960 by 1440, super AMOLED screen. Uh, in the U.S., you're going to have a Qualcomm Snapdragon 835 processor. In international, Samsung's going to have uh, the Exynos Octa-Core storage. There is three storage models, but only one for the U.S., which is fine, I really think. So uh, 64 gig in the U.S., but outside the U.S., you're going to have 64, 128, and 256 gigs, and a micro SD expansion. There's going to be 6 gigs of RAM. Cameras. On the back, dual two megapixel cameras with OIS, wide angle uh, uh, crack sh- um, f slash 1.7, telephoto f.2.4. Uh, f slash 2.4. On uh, on the front, you got an eight megapixel camera. You've got a uh, 3300 mAh battery. Other specs: it's going to run on Android 7.1.1 Nougat. Uh, IP68 water and dust resistant, wireless charging, NFC and MST for Samsung Pay, obviously, USB type C, 3.5 headphone jack, 5.0 Bluetooth, uh, LET category 16, uh, also Wi Fi. One of the biggest surprises to date is the multiple size of the device. Early reports claim that there would only be a single 64 inch, I mean 64 gig, similar to what they offered with the S. 64 S- inch, <laughs> God damn! Yeah, right. <laughs> These phones are getting big. <laughs> uh, but it seems that they're offering the three, um, three, le- three different levels of memory. Unfortunately, you know, if you lived outside, you would have the of the United States, you would have the option of the three. Unfortunately, for the U.S., it is only the 64 gig. Uh, pre-orders of the device went live on August 24th. Uh, if you were one of the unlucky people that had 
a uh, Note 7, Samsung is attempting to make it up to you. They are offering all Note 7 customers a trade-in discount up to 425 off the Note 8. Eligible customers can go to samsung.com the, when the pre-orders go live. All the, also previously mentioned, uh, the pre-order of the Note 8 between August 24th and September 24th, you will have a choice of either a free Samsung Gear 360 camera or a charging bundle. The charging bundle is the foundation, um, the Galaxy Foundation Kit, which is priced at 190 and contains a free 128 uh, gigabyte EVO Plus memory card and a wireless charging pad. And if you notice, the promotion date continues into the actual re um, time, release timeline of the device, which is expected on the 15th. So basically within the less than 10 days, when the device goes live, you go in and pick one up, you're gonna get that shit on uh, when you pick it up. Uh, there, in regards to price, T-Mobile is the cheapest one to pick up at a Note 8 where the phone runs uh, for $930. Alternatively, the carry is also offering a new device for a $210 down, $210 down payment and a $30 monthly installments uh, with T-Mobile's equipment installment plan or zero down and $39 a month on the jump on demand customers. Verizon has the Note 8 at $960 or $40 a month for 24 months. At AT&T, the Note 8 runs you $950 or $31.67 for 30 months on their AT&T Next installment plan. Sprint is also selling the Note for $960 at full retail, but is offering a few somewhat convoluted deals of their own. If you're switching to Sprint, you can get the Note 8 with activation of a new line for $20 a month through Sprint Flex as well as the option of upgrading every year with a new Galaxy Forever offer. And if you'd like to skip the car carrier craziness, you'll be able to get an unlocked Note 8 starting at $929. And there is only two colors of the phone. It's only gonna be black or gray. Um, and if you're one of those that love the Gear VR headset, it seems you will need to pick one up for the new Note 8. The last version of the VR headset came out earlier this year when the Galaxy S8 and S8 Plus dropped. Unfortunately, they didn't think to take into account the larger screen of the Note 8 um, possesses. So the headset will cost you $129, but it is backwards compatible with all recent Samsung headsets or handsets, including the S8, the S8 Plus, S7, S7 Edge, S6, S6 Edge, S6 Plus, and the Note 5. Um, however, uh, for uh, their, let me see, okay. As pre-orders opened on Thursday, uh, this, um, this is all the information you're gonna need for the device. Uh, while what also is bold with that Samsung did is they didn't listen to the internet and change the Note branding. While the internet believes it was, it would be, it was the death of Samsung, one of seven, is not completely bad. However, but um, there better not be any fiery sort of issues. Hey. Um, all these Apple loving websites will be looking for the first report of any of these issues and completely blow oh, it yeah. out of proportion. If Samsung has the same success as they did with the Galaxy 8 and 8 Plus, uh, S8 and S8 Plus, we could see a banner year for Samsung and would have to make Apple work just a bit harder. So, I was looking at a uh, digital trends as a side by side comparison with the Note 8 and the um, S8 Plus, and I actually I, I just sent you that link. Yeah, too, I saw if that. You want to take a look at. Yes. Yeah, um, there are four differences between the two phones. Major difference. Uh, one, uh, obviously, the pen, the right. stylus. Um, the camera is the same megapixel uh, for front and back, but the, the, the rear camera is dual on the note. It's not dual on the, uh, right. I don't really know what that does. It, it actually, supposedly for the dual, it's supposed to allow you to a lot more, you know, like where to kind of focus, like to make the shit, the pictures a little, a little more, um, I guess, professional looking through the note. Okay. Um, the, well, I guess another one is it has 7.11 nougat and the S eight plus has 7.0. Yeah. Okay. Um, the screen size different is literally 0.1 of an inch. Yeah. That's the, that's the difference of the screen. Um, and what was the other thing? Oh, the, the RAM, obviously. So the um, the Note has the 6 gigs, while the S8 has the 4 gigs. And surprisingly, the Note has a smaller battery. 
Um, the Note's battery is 3300 mAh, while the um, S8 Plus is 3500 mAh. Um, basically, what I'm trying to say is I'm not knocking the Note. The Note's a beautiful phone. If you've been waiting for an upgrade and, and you really like that stylus feel, um, definitely pick one up. But if you have an S8 Plus, don't feel like you're missing something. Um, yes, two extra gigs of RAM, but honestly, you don't really need any more than four gigs. Like, six eight is six gigs is is really overkill. I mean, four gigs is overkill. Right. You know. So, um, all I'm trying to point out here is if because I have an S8 Plus, and the first thing I heard when the Note came out, and I even told you, my motherfucker, like I got this S8, <laughs> but you're not missing much. The only thing you're really missing is the stylus. Yeah. So if you were really hard pressed on that stylus, and okay, you know, hopefully you waited and you can get the stylus with it. Um, the 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 update to um, to Android that will come to the S8 in time. Don't worry about it. Um, but I am surprised by the battery. I'm surprised that there, it has a slightly smaller battery in the Note because everything else is the same exact processor. Everything's the same, and and then you have a more advanced camera. I'll be surprised to see the battery life tests uh, compared to the S8 Plus because the battery life for this S8 Plus, and I know you got the regular S8, the battery life is phenomenal yeah i mean that's a plus i go all day i'll, I'll take it off the charger at like 5 30 in the morning go to work whole day I'm, I'm using the phone i actually i stream audio pretty much all day and then i come home and i'm at 50 percent. yeah that's the same here you know, like, so unless I... I unless i use my bluetooth headset if i use my bluetooth headset it takes it takes about 10 percent more yeah I've noticed. Yeah, but, usually um, when I would get up in the morning, I would take it off the charger around 7 a.m. And then when I would come up ready to go to sleep, I'd be at like 24% and that's like 11 p.m. And that's of right. all day use, you know. Um, noti noting on here, the Note 8 puts those dual cameras to good use. Live focus, a new camera mode, lets you apply a DSLR-like blur effect, which is pretty awesome because those cameras are fucking expensive before or after you capture a photo. The dual camera, takes its close-up shot and a wide-angle shot at the same time. Ah, that's super clarity, yeah. and that's cool. I mean, I know there's there's quite a few phones that are using the dual camera setup. There's rumors that the upcoming um, iPhone's going to have dual cameras as well. Um, Probably so, not, because they usually they usually wait because you know they have to make it a big deal. Right. Yeah. They'll they'll wait until everybody's used to it, and then they'll try to act like it's some new thing. <laughs> right. Um, like wireless charging. I did, <laughs> I did read on digital trends not to not to count contradict you steve but uh blue and gold notes uh will be available in international markets yeah. in a u.s um, it's only black and uh, gray and what that means is that probably next year you'll get more. they're gonna go oh my god it's blue and gold too yeah you know so well, they did that with um, the they did that with the um uh with the s8 because it was like because they only gave you like was it black and like a bluish color the one that i ended up getting which was like that little bluish black no the s8 the s8 has a silver too because oh. i have a silver one. Oh yeah yeah because i know they didn't do a whole array of colors like they did in the past no. but yeah but samsung's kind of like that usually especially with their high-end well especially like with have... this because you kind of right. don't want to you know do a whole lot because well, it's a it's a classy phone well, like, yeah. you you don't really You're using it for business crazy. you're kind of using it for and that's business. That's kind of Apple. Kind of does the same thing. Like they, they have they have the rose gold. I think is the most exotic color they have. Um, and and then you'll see the the one they the uh, what is it the five C or something. Right. That one has a bunch of colors because that's one that's designed more budget budget friendly. Yeah. But let's uh, so let's also ghetto let, people are color. <laughs> right. <laughs> but let's also keep in mind here. It doesn't matter what fucking color you get. You're gonna get. You're gonna have a fucking uh, cover. That's anyway. real talk. Because I have the silver one. And the only way you can tell is right around the camera because that otter box is uh, all around this motherfucker. So especially with these new um, Samsung phones where they have the curved screen on the side, there's no – you can't tell the color unless it's out of the case. Um, and I like that little bit of silver on the back. kind of slick. You know what I mean? Right. But um, the silver looks looks clean too. I just like all my stuff to be black because once you go black, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Um, but – yeah, I mean, yeah, it's, it's I, one of those that, like, and you've always heard Adam and I have always said this, you know, beforehand. If you just got an S8 or an S8 Plus, there is no need to jump to the Note. I mean, no. you, you, there is no, because, I mean, aside from the, if you have, especially if you have the Plus. And don't feel like you're missing out on anything. No, because it's nothing Because if you have, if you have the regular S8 like Steve does, you probably didn't want the Note anyway. Mm -hmm. Because it's big. You know what I mean? And most, there's certain people don't want a big ass phone i know steve's not not into that 
Um, and then if you if you're like me who prefer a larger phone and you have the S8 Plus, you don't. There's no need for any. You're you're not missing. They're, they're essentially the same fucking phones. Yeah. Um, just the stylus is the biggest thing. And actually, my um, I'm gonna surprise my wife next month. Working all this overtime and, and pick her up a note. Uh, she loves the note because she she has beautiful handwriting. Like literally, <laughs> I get fucking erect when I read a note from her. Um, so she loves to write things down. She doesn't like to type mm. um, her notes and and stuff like that. So uh, she loved. She never had a note, but I had the note four. Yeah. Which still one of the greatest phones I've ever you almost had. Got the a note seven. four was. I almost did. Yeah. The Note 4 was fucking awesome when I got it. What did I upgrade from? It was some bullshit phone. Isn't it this? I kind of, I want to say it was like, I thought it was the fucking um, Sprint one. Like, oh, yeah. It was the um, that, the Samsung Edge. Yeah. The, where it's a slide up keyboard. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but that was getting long in the tooth by the time I got the 4. So still stay Sam- Samsung. I, I love Samsung. Um, but the. Uh, I'm gonna try to surprise her with that. Get a little note four, or not note four. Yeah, I'll get her note four. Fuck it. Um, <laughs> you know what? Get her Just show, be classy. Get her a note five. But see the right. <laughs> but see the funny. The funny thing is, is when I had the note, I used the stylus for the first week, mm. and then I because I have terrible handwriting. Oh, right. So I never used it. Every once in a while, you know, I'm laying in the bed, I pull it up to kind of mess around and stuff. And then the only time I ever really used it was to show off. <laughs> you know, like when you're with all your friends and we all pull the phone out to look at something, I'd have to unclick, take that fucking stylus out and kind of lick, kinda lick the tip, flick like you, the wrist. Lick the tip, right. lick the tip like you do with a pencil, you know? Right. Like it's a quill. <laughs> you know, just, <laughs> just to be a dick, you know? Because that, what's that the, thing when the note out of your, what's out, that thing was, sticking out of your, uh, your note? Oh, that's the quill attachment I put onto my stylus. That's right. It's like a little feather. <laughs> um, because when the note four was out, it was like the flagship phone like it was the if you weren't thinking about iphones it was like the greatest android phone you could have you know so i was i was fucking humble bro. i wasn't even humble about it i was just like motherfucker y'all phones is bitches you know <laughs> drawing pictures and shit you know? <laughs> um but yeah i'm gonna i'm definitely gonna cop that for her so if i do end up getting that for because you never know what can happen life sucks um, I'll definitely be talking about it on the podcast. And I'll kind of give it a run through, and I can do since I have the S8 Plus, I can do a side by side and maybe right. open up some apps at the same time. And I'm mean, the same fucking processor, but I'm I'm interested to see what that six gigs will do. But I, I kind of think it's not going to do shit. Yeah. So dude, it um, even opened it, before I even touched it. It like uh, it read my mind. <laughs> now you can now another thing, and you mentioned this mm-hmm. was the um, oh I closed the comparison for some reason. Um, was the size? So it was it one twenty eight? Yeah, it's available in the S eight plus is available in one twenty eight too in international market. Right. Um, I don't know why international markets get such fucking dope things. Yeah. But I think because they, the majority of people in America buy the mid tier when it comes to size, especially if you have an SD card. Because I I remember um, with this one, so I got the this is sixty four. Yeah, all, obviously that, that was the only They're option we had. But then I don't give a fuck because I have an SD card. Yeah. I haven't even bought an SD card. I don't need it. But um, actually, I was thinking about it because uh, I'm using 40-something gig right now. Because yeah. I used uh, – I got the SD card. Actually, the SD card that I put in was from my old Edge, my 7 Edge. And yeah. um, and I had – because that was when it first came back. And I, and I think I got a 32 gig. That was before they started doing the 64. I think I got a 32, so then I, I went and got the SD card because I was like, shit. It held up to like, I think it was like 200 gig mini uh, right. SD card. So I was like, fuck, I don't need it anymore. And then I put it I in. I think I'm just going to wait for it because um, Amazon has dope sales on that's SD where cards. I got, I'll that's just where wait. I got mine. I think I right. got mine. It was like 150 gig for like, it was like 16 bucks or something like that. Because I, I, I want to get a... I want to get a fast one because that that can you get the cheapy ones it slows down your phone oh yeah because that access speed is just ridiculous but um yeah so no the no i keep wanting to say note four uh <laughs> the the note eight it's the memories I, man but i am happy that they didn't change the name because it, it also shows um confidence it shows confidence in themselves and that they're not trying to be you know slick about it and stuff like that i i would have been i would have laughed at it if they changed it yeah. To be honest with you. Oh, yeah. And Note's the perfect name yeah. for that fucking phone. I mean, there's so know? many so. people. I remember seeing so many people like, oh, well, they have to change the Note because they have to get rid of that stigma. And I was like going, it was one fucking phone. 
it was yeah and, and then you got the galaxy it's like oh yeah now the galaxy line that's what happens when you have a gas and it was like going oh so if an iphone 8 blew up they have to stop saying iphone right you know it's like no they don't you call it the the me call yeah no, <laughs> so um, it's like well it's, the iphone what was it the iphone 5 had that antenna issue we if, oh the four the, the four in- yeah was it the four? Yeah, they, they didn't change the fucking name. They actually, well, Apple just kind of was like, "Oh, you're just holding the phone wrong." <laughs> <laughs> and Apple users were like, "Oh, okay." <laughs> right. All right. So this next article is long in the tooth, Steve. <laughs> so let me let me read this from uh, thelazygeeks.com. Um, when Verizon brought back the unlimited data plan earlier this year, which I have, um, it seemed that things were changing, especially since T-Mobile was doing some big business offering unlimited Uh, however with all good things they must come to an end starting today verizon is offering three version three different versions of their unlimited plan and all all of them include throttling and resolution restrictions according to the verge so here are the new plans we're gonna go through these real quick go unlimited plan one line 75 a month two lines 65 per line a month three lines is 50 per line a month and four lines Four lines plus anything over four lines uh, is forty dollars per month. Obviously, you save a little bit of money the more lines you have. Um, Paper free billing and auto pay must be enabled for these prices. Otherwise, you pay five dollars more. Um, unlimited four G LTE data, but you could experience reduced speeds if the network is congested at all times. Uh, not after not after ten gigabytes or fifteen gigabytes or twenty gigabytes or twenty two gigabytes of full speed data usage. If the network is congested where you are, uh, you might get slowed down, even at the very beginning of your billing cycle. Unlimited talk and text, of course. Um, DVD quality video stream, that's 4, 480p, on smartphones and HD 720p video streaming on tablets. There's no way to watch at higher resolutions for either. Unlimited mobile hotspot, but hotspot speeds are capped at a maximum of 600 uh, kbps. I actually just recently realized that my unlimited plan comes with um, hotspot. I just figured oh, I didn't yeah. have it. Oh, yeah. yeah, and then I, I was telling my friend at work, I was like, yeah, it's pretty cool, huh? And now everyone's like, hey, can you turn your hotspot on? No, <laughs> no. I can't. <laughs> like, you guys are going to fuck my shit up. Um, other plan, Beyond Unlimited. Um, one line 85 a month, two lines 80 per line a month, three lines 60 per month, per line a month, uh, four lines plus $50 per line a month. Paper free billing and auto pay must be enabled for these prices. Otherwise, you pay five dollars. You more. sound like the you sound like the uh, the legal guy at the end of the commercials. <laughs> All right, so this plan is unlimited four G data, but you could experience reduced speeds at times of network congestion. At times of network congestion, once you exceed twenty two gigabytes in a billing cycle, unlimited talk and text, HD video streaming on smartphones limited to seven twenty p, and full HD ten eighty p video streaming for tablets. There is no way to stream videos at 1080p or higher on phones, period. Um, unlimited mobile hotspot data with up to 15 gigs of LTE speeds. If your laptop is tethered to your phone, video quality on your laptop will be limited to 1080p. Um, free calling, texting, and data in Mexico and Canada. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. Um, that's just a, kind then, of a PG, because uh, it contains the, um, the business unlimited and prepaid. Right, so we we have a uh, on the, if you go to the webs or the link in the show notes, we definitely have a little uh, infograph up, show you show you the different plans, um, and then do I have to read the rest of this? Uh, oh yes, I do. Yeah, there's a quote in there from the press release. Yes, I do. Yes, I do. So these plans give you the best. I didn't know. I, I didn't know if you just copied legal shit. That's why I, I didn't know. <laughs> these plans give you the best unlimited choices, but you also get what only Verizon can give: you, the best network, the best rewards program, the best way to manage your plan with the My Verizon app and the best selection of phones and devices. I'm sorry, the but the My Verizon app is slow as fuck. <laughs> and I think AT&T has a better selection of devices, don't they? I, they they probably did they have, did in the past. They probably are close. They're probably like probably almost on the even keel, maybe a yeah. little bit higher. T-Mobile though. Ugh. <laughs> um now, keep in mind, if you have an old plan, unlimited plan or grandfather plan, you will be able to keep that plan, which I got. But <laughs> Unfortunately, the throttling aspect will be implemented regardless of which plan you're on. Wah, wah, wah. Yeah. We're doing this to ensure all customers have a great experience on our network since there is no visible difference in quality on a smartphone or tablet when video is shown 
uh, at higher resolutions than 720 on phones and 1080 on tablets. I don't want to side with the devil here, but that is kind of true. Yeah, it, it, it's if, funny because the, the the Verge actually said, well, they don't produce any evidence of them. I'm like, they don't have to. I go, when they were doing HD televisions, they're saying if you're getting right. anything under a 26 inch, you don't need 1080. You can Just get a 720 yeah. and you'll see Because the, hu- the human eye cannot tell a difference on that small of a screen. Yeah. It, the bigger you go, the more you, that's why I think it's cute when they have like 32 inch 4Ks. Right. You, you're not going to tell a difference. <laughs> like what the fuck? You know? So like even with my phone, I got the S8 Plus, like I already said, it's bigger screen, 1080p. 720p look exactly the same right there is no discernible difference now a tablet they're a little bit bigger you'll you'll notice a bit of a difference on that let me let me read this last part because this is actually my opinion on the whole thing all right go ahead so uh now let's put some perspective on this the internet is telling you that it is a bad thing and the throttling aspect is bad as many of us do not have any way to check on congestion in certain areas they could simply throttle consumers for whatever reason they choose to however if you're streaming a lot of video content you should be using wi-fi connection anyway or utilizing offline viewing as far as the resolution issue there are big there is a big deal about about nothing. Viewing 1080p on a 5.5 smartphone is a bit overkill. If you're right. watching 720 on a smartphone, you will liter- there you will literally um, see no um, notice no difference. You will hear sites like claim that Verizon has no proof of the matter, but the logic has been in place since the release of the high definition of flat screen televisions. Since the release of fucking tube TVs, like remember remember back in the day. So you get a tube TV. They're all at 480p, mm-hmm. if, just in case you're young and don't know. <laughs> right. uh, this is pre-HD. The, you always wanted to play the video games on that 13-inch in the back room yeah. because the 13-inch was crystal fucking clear. Yeah, because everything and the bigger the screen, out. exactly. The bigger the screen, the worse it looked. Yeah. 1080p makes sense on tablets as their screens are bigger and the picture quality right. would be affected. However, the mandatory 480 on a smartphone with the lower plan is a bit harsh. Yeah. Uh, not only that, but restricting tablets to 720 is livable, but seems to be a bit of an overreach on their part. It is obvious that they that they want you to spend 10 more bucks on the next plan up. The bottom line of this news is that it's that it's not authoring anything different than what AT&T and T-Mobile are doing now. Not to mention that people are calling out, calling on net neutrality, which it isn't violating. Net neutrality nope. was designed to keep everyone on the same playing field. They are not favoring any sites with throttling um, while others are not. This is across the board. It doesn't make it right, but it does make it legal. Because there are some, I, there are some sites that were saying, well, you know, and, and they're going right in the face of net neutrality. I go, that's not net neutrality. Yeah, stop using fucking buzzwords and straw man arguments. To fucking, <laughs> like you can't connect the two things just because. Right. Um. The the whole this whole thing, yeah, it does suck, but it's not as bad as it fucking sounds. Mm-hmm. I mean, honestly, AT and T and Sprint and all the other users are probably looking at Verizon users. I'm like, welcome to the fucking party. Right. You know what I mean? Because it's been like that over there for a long time, and I know a lot of AT and T users. AT and T works very well in Phoenix. I don't know how it works. Some areas, you know, every area is different. And all the AT&T users I have, they have no complaints. I, I know a few that have unlimited plans, and they say, I've never noticed it throttle. Yeah. You know, so it's 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 going to be the same thing. Now, if you're if you're constantly – and there's people at my job. Mm-hmm. They should be working, <laughs> but they're constantly streaming Netflix all day long. You're just being greedy at that point. Yeah. You know, like, you don't need to do that. And if you have to deal with some buffering every once in a while, oh, yeah, just, <laughs> you know, come on. Yeah, just fucking deal. And there's ways to get around it. All these services now have downloadable viewing for most of their shows. Shit, Amazon streaming is legit. Netflix has it too. I think Hulu offers it as well. I think. I don't know because I, I. I don't know. I've done it with don't Amazon. I've one. done with um, with Amazon and with Netflix, but I haven't really. And then if you if you stream a lot of music, you got um, you get a little plan for for uh, Spotify. You can download music on that. You listen. To, you, you listen. To, you you listen to a lot of podcasts, and you don't want to use like a pat. Um, uh, you know, just you know, regular uh, podcast feeder, fucking Stitcher has an um, and you an don't offline. even have to, you don't even have to think about the podcast one. You just set it to download episodes when you get to Wi-Fi. Yeah. So as soon as you walk into your house, it starts downloading them again. Yeah, and same you thing with so and it's, same it's, thing with uh, Stitcher because I I didn't realize I activated my down uh, my offline mode until I took the subway down and I'm like, hey, dude, my podcast like didn't skip, and then I realized I had down uh, offline mode on. So it, da- it updates every time a new like, podcast comes I like up, it how updates. It, I do that, too. I like how we both still say skip. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, so 
buffer. Yes, is it, <laughs> right. Would it be preferable if this wasn't happening? Of course it would be. Is it fire and brimstone? No. no. It's not that big of a fucking deal. Yeah. You know, so whatever. All right. So on that note, I think that brings us right to the end of the headlines. <laughs> All right, so our topic this week, and it it, it really shouldn't. I don't. I don't. I really feel it'll run very long. Um, is DC and the standalone the standalone movies? Like we already got, uh, we already brought it to you earlier with uh, the Joker um, story, but there was also a story about uh, Batman and a standalone movie, which this part kind of made me a little angry because it was people making a people making a connection when there wasn't a connection um so i'm uh, really quickly i'm just gonna read the article wait a minute are you trying to tell me that yeah people make connections for based on assumptions on the internet yeah i know right it's like what the fuck i know it's crazy this is news to me people because <laughs> in the original joker story there was we mentioned that uh there was an, an unnamed banner that was going out which was going to evolve standalone stories in the dc universe and somebody went ahead and then brought and then put together a uh uh or re uh brought back in the news a podcast interview by matt reeves uh, about a month ago so I'm just going to read the little article that I'm going to that uh, uh, I wrote uh, in regards to clarifying the, that the whole news you may see is clarifying the internet confusion about Batman. Things are very interesting in the world of Warner Brothers and the upcoming Batman movie. In the last couple of weeks, we've heard Affleck saying he would be an ape for Matt Reeves. His brother Casey saying that most likely he won't be doing the movie to walk to later walk that comment back to Reeves himself saying the Batman would be a standalone movie, then the news of the Joker and Harley Quinn standalone movies, thus the internet deducing that Batman will not feature Affleck at all. We were reporting yesterday that, uh, at least from the day of this comment, uh, that the Batman would be a standalone movie. We deduced that the movie would not fall in line with whatever story the current slate of movies, uh, whatever the story, current slate of movies. This was a good thing and we thought this would allow them to tell whatever story they wanted to. However, in the site, in a site digging up an old, older comment and connecting it with news of the Joker and Harley Quinn not being part of the DCEU, the deduction the internet made was impressive, but even I didn't even figure that it would be the same. Silly me. Quote, of course Batman will be part of the DC universe. Matt Reeves wrote clarifying his comments. Batman will be Batman in the comments for from a while back, not about being part of the DCU. I was talking about the Batman being a story specifically about Batman, not about the others in the universe. It would be filled. It wouldn't be filled with cameos servicing other stories. It would be a Batman story. Something. Uh, this is something I figured. Quote. This could be, and this is what I wrote the day before, this could be a good thing creatively for directors and writers who choose to jump on board the DC train, I wrote yesterday. Marvel uh, sort of painted themselves into a corner with everything being tied into one another. With DC's approach, this could allow many of the same actors to do fresh or retelling some amazing comic stories within the universe. Yet the internet took it a step further. While we took the news as it was, other sites took it to to that step further, not looking at the facts or dates, but made news based on what they thought would be would get traffic. Unfortunately, this is the news we've been dealing with now, with other rumors swirling that Gotham Sirens is sidelined and Suicide Squad 2 has been fast-tracked. It's hard to tell what is going on. In the end, unless something is announced otherwise, just let it be. If the news seems to be coming from a good place, we will let you know. However, everything now is just speculation. The internet just needs to calm down. Now, when we were talking about earlier um, about uh, DC and the standalone movies and how it could be confusing for people, the issue that I, that I, I, that I was going with is the fact that the problem that you're going to have is if you have Jared Leto in, let's say, two uh, movies, so you have uh, Suicide Squad and then you have the Joker and Harley Quinn. 
Then after that, you do an origin story which doesn't have Jared Leto, and maybe the Joker even looks different in that. People are going to be confused. Yeah. Um, Comic book fans won't be. Mm Mm-mm. But regular folk are. Exactly. Or same thing with Batman. I mean, Superman. And they do Red Sun. Let's say Henry Cavill is, is all the way through in these in these movies. And then they do Red Sun. And they go, well, we're going to do a different looking Batman. Because we figure, you know, Batman would look different because he crash landed in Russia versus crash landed in Kansas. Um, and and maybe, maybe, be, uh, you know, a brick shit house in, in, in Russia, you know. Uh, but people would be confused because they're like well wait i don't i don't get it i thought henry cavill did he leaving oh but he's going to be back in whatever justice league 2 or whatever it confuses people what i i think if they do standalone movies which kind of is what they should be doing anyway like we had with marvel in the beginning each movie kind of was on its own it created its own universe it told its own story and it didn't and usually anytime there was a cameo or a crossover it was always in one of those after credit sequences yeah. Um, I think it would be cool if they did standalone movies before we got Justice League. I kind of think that this is kind of what we should have gotten before we jumped right into Justice League. You know, kind of like... Yeah, I, that's how I feel, too, is that a lot of these movies, if they were in a better order, mm-hmm. would make more sense. Like, it, and I don't know. I, I feel that Warner Brothers is is just making things... They're doing one of two things because I've been I've been thinking about this. They're either just making things they think will make money, right. which is probably the more likely thing, or they're saying to their staff because Warner Brothers is is very old. They do business very old school, where they have everyone's in house. Mm-hmm. Like for the most part, they basically tell their staff like, "Well, what movies do you guys think are cool to do?" Which is dangerous right. to do. If that's what because because people are going to say all kinds of shit. Right. You know, um, I. And also, too, they, they've always had that, and they're commenting on it a little bit, but they've always had that stigma of we can't look like we're copying Marvel. Right. No one thinks you're copying Marvel. Only stupid people think that. Yeah. You know, so... Essentially, the people with Twitter accounts. <laughs> exactly. So, the, the, biggest th- the biggest thing that I think is dumb is the Batman movie not being part of... Uh, of um, continue being a standalone. That's just, that's just a missed opportunity. At that why, point, why do you think that that it, that it being a standalone? Because I just you're trying to create this universe. Why are you going to suddenly make a Batman movie that's a standalone? Doesn't it make more sense? It, it makes sense to start it that way. Like to me, if they were to do a standalone, what what should have happened? And and you know, to to be kind of, I don't want to I don't want to knock this you know the dc universe but the, the fact that it just seems like they're just kind of like we're getting a justice league before we will even have a flash or an aquaman standalone movie like we don't have you know part of part of their allure is like their origin stories you know part of their building their universe and that's one of the things that you kind of have to give marvel a lot of credit for because we had everybody's origin story and we had two iron man movies we had and everybody's origin story before the avengers came out so we all knew these characters. We all knew where there was. So then when there was references or characters came over like Loki and, and um, you know, which a lot of came over from Thor, it was kind of like, oh, cool. You know, you, you kind of had this like this universe. And it's kind of what they did with the Defenders. But the fact that, okay, we had a Superman movie. We don't need an origin story for Batman. So we're just going to lump him in there with, um, with Superman and make a Batman movie Superman. And then do Wonder Woman and then have Justice League. It's kind of like, no, what we should have had is we should have had a Batman movie, but not an origin story of Batman. We should have had a Batman standalone movie of where Batman is at this point. Because some. Yeah, I guess that makes sense. Because we, you know, when you cram, because to me, it seems like we had a really big missed opportunity when they crammed Batman in there. Like, obviously, a lot of shit has happened to Batman. And obviously we got an older Batman, but we kind of had to figure that out on the fly. But then this all goes to the fact that the sequence is weird. Like, why are we starting in the future and then going backwards? Because that's almost what it sounds like they're going to do. Yeah. It's going to confuse the shit out of you. But also another thing that would truly confuse the shit out of everyone, but I would love what happened. We got that little hint of Flashpoint. Right. If you remember when when the Flash came back and this and that. Right. So could they be doing that? Could everything be rebooting? Could Flashpoint happen? 
Right. You know, so it's it's like maybe it's kind of like so. What you're you're thinking is maybe it's that concept of let's put all this out here. We'll do that flashpoint thing and right. then reset it. So now we've got it out there where everybody's kind of like, yeah. okay, we got it, like, and now we can kind of kind of start with a clean slate. DC's like, let's go hard as fuck, <laughs> get Justice League out, and then they're like, okay, flashpoint, <laughs> and that's going to be the Flash standalone, right? Right. Flashpoint, and then all of a sudden, do 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 do. Oh look, I'm gonna be Batman now. Oh look, Superman landed. Oh look, right. ah, <laughs> that that if that happened, I'd be like ah, like that's <laughs> clever as fuck. You know what I mean? Right. But it would be confusing. Right. And and honestly, and I'm not knocking Marvel for this because Marvel's brilliant the way they've been doing their their cinematic universe. But people have gotten spoiled with it because right. the Marvel universe is so clean. The cinematic universe, it's so easy to follow it really and is. jump into that DC. No matter what, just by the nature of how DC operates in comic books, <laughs> there's no way for them to be as easy to follow as Marvel. Because DC, when you read the comic books, isn't. Re- recently, they have. After Flashpoint, things have cleaned up. Yeah. But if you go before that, oh yeah, it's it's crazy. Yeah, and that you know, and that so, becomes a that becomes a big issue because see, like I think standalone movies, and I think what I have to kind of define is standalone versus what the internet is defining as standalone what i see as standalone movies is an isolated movie like what matt reeves said when if we do a batman movie we should have a batman movie anything within that batman universe should be in that standalone movie there shouldn't be a cameo superman we shouldn't have him you know you know randomly like talking or you know talking to wonder woman or or anybody, any of the other characters. We should just have. Oh, okay. That. Then I agree. Then I agree with you. Yeah. See, I thought you. I by standalone, I thought you meant almost like the Nolan verse. Right, but then like that, all of a sudden, Batman is there, there's no other superhero. And Batman. that that's the issue that I'm having with that unnamed standalone version is their version of standalone means outside of that universe, and so. It's 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 we're we are kind of getting Nolan esque when we're talking about standalone versus standalone. What do you mean? You know, because like that kind of movie, I would say what kind of what Marvel has. Like Marvel has kind of a standalone. When you have a Thor movie, you do have a Thor movie. You have the movie with Thor. Sometimes they'll bring in another character. Like only recently, they're bringing in the Hulk for this one because they're going and they're they can't do a standalone Hulk movie because Universal still owns the rights to that. So they'll bring him in in Thor and then you know lead it up to the new ju- the new Avengers movie Infinity War but what you have here is you want them to do not just a standalone movie but a st- outside the existing universe so which means like oh yeah it doesn't fit within the timeline that you've been watching for the last few years so now we're going to have a movie that's going to have a different joker a different story which isn't going to affect anything else yeah that works great in comic books you know as you know graphic stories like you know um Spider-Man Blue or, you know, um, uh, shit, what I'm trying to think of, uh, The Killing Joke or Red Sun yeah, one, or, or... One-offs work in comic books because we're used to it. Right. But one-offs in movies when there's already an established universe, and that's the real difference. So standalone or one-off. Yeah. That's the real difference. That's the real difference and, there. And, and if you're doing one-offs in movies when you, like, imagine if Marvel did that. <laughs> imagine if Marvel did a one-off Miles Morales Spider-Man. Right. And and it didn't go into their norm. People would be like, "What the fuck? Where, where's Peter Parker or where's Iron Man or whatever?" Or not, or it's not so even that. Or not even that. If they go to a regular, if they do that, Stanley was like, "Oh, that was cool and it did well." Then it's like, "Well, why is he needing the Avengers movie? Where, where's where, exactly. where's Miles Morales? How come he's not there?" You know. And then you exactly. And comic book fans would be like, "Oh, I get it." Yeah, comic book like, fans would only, be like, yeah. you know what I mean. And that's the thing is, is that if you're kind of appealing, and and, they, and Warner Brothers has to be careful of not falling into the Zack Snyder trade, you know, because the the Zack Snyder train is just it's it's very much geek oriented. And when a fanboy directs, <laughs> <laughs> right? When a fanboy gets real, when a fanboy gets right. 150 million dollars <laughs> to do whatever <laughs> he wants, um, and not to knock it, I'm not knocking Zack Snyder. I know some people will be there and you know will be knocking him, but you know what? He he's what with what he's given us. I thought he's done he's done well, given the fact that he kind of had Car Blanche to do. He kind of got Nolan, you know, you know, basically do whatever he wants, but he focused so much on the 
the uh, fanboyism of all the little things meant something in within the universe as opposed to oh we got wonder woman which dealt strictly with wonder woman dealing with just wonder woman stuff and not having you know having having that little bruce wayne signature at the bottom of it but nothing else and see i when it comes to snyder i um I don't agree with some of his choices creatively. I'm obviously I'm not a fucking director, so it, it, this is just my opinion. But I respect him because you could tell his hat's in the right place. Right. He's not just doing it to make money. He loves these characters, and he's tr- he's really trying to put it. But he overdid it a little bit, yeah. especially in Batman versus Superman. Right. He he just overextended too much. I like Batman vs. Superman because of that. Because I love that shit. I love the little details and stuff. Is the movie kind of a mess sometimes? Yes. You know, but the problem is, is while I'm watching the movie, even even uh, Man of Steel a mm-hmm. lot, you're watching it and you, as a comic book fan and someone who's, who, me, I've grown up reading these characters, I know a lot of ins and outs of them. I can already tell while watching the movie, there's going to be a lot of people that don't get that. Right. Or there's going to be a lot of people scratching their fucking heads which is one of the things i loved about the the star trek reboot when they did that is the fact that the story the story was clean it was concise you followed it but there were so many little easter eggs that when you were a fan you enjoyed it even more right you know but it but none of those Easter. it wasn't heavy handed exactly none of those easter eggs you know required were required (laughs) or made or made a difference in the story like oh you didn't get that that's what happened and that was the thing that I really liked about that original Star Trek is that it, it it had that feel of like, oh, wow, like people that normally didn't like Star Trek liked that movie. And they were like, wow, that was really good. And then it's like, but then the fans were just like, oh, my God, you see this? And you, they mentioned this and they said this and they talked about that. You know, it was kind of like, you know, it was like it, it paid off both ways. And I and I felt that Zack Snyder kind of did it more for the fans in, a, in, a, in the aspect of and not to be in a derogatory sense, but to pay the fan service. Right. Because and not. And the problem is, and you're talking to two comic fans here, <laughs> so you know you still want the movie to be co- coherent. You want it to flow. You don't want to have to. Oh well, it was it was mentioned in the Spider-Man 167 and Iron Man 154. You know when they had this little crossover that only lasted three panels. That was the reference to that. You know you you don't want that. And that's one of the things I like about the DC TV universe is that you'll have Perfect. a lot of those those little moments, but. They're only for the fans because it, it, it in the story wise, it works, you know, it's part of the story. But that extra little touch, like a lot of times when you see the, the, the live action version of the covers, you know, the iconic covers that they do or, or panels and stuff like that. It's simply because they did that just because. But it didn't if you didn't uh, know it, it didn't it didn't make a difference. Well, and I think putting fitting fan service into a movie logically is an art form in itself yeah. and and someone who i think is the rembrandt of that in the comic book movie universe is is james gunn yeah oh james God, gunn yeah. does that in the guardians of the galaxy he does it so elegantly that you you almost don't even know like you'll notice it but you don't notice it right like it like um a, a perfect example is the first um i still haven't seen the second one yeah the, um, the, the the uh the first um guardians of the galaxy when they walked into the collectors and all the stuff that was around oh yeah and you're kind of like, oh, I know what that is, or oh, that's that's Warlock's fucking um, egg or whatever. That's this, you know. And, and it, but it was, <laughs> but it was so it was so throwaway. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like if if you if you didn't know what it was, you wouldn't have noticed it. You, that's that's the that's what you really that's kind of where Snyder messes up. Yeah, where he focuses too much on the Easter egg. Right. So people who don't know it, they're like, is that important? Yeah. Like, what what am I missing? They're lost. You they're lost I mean? in it. Exactly. Yeah. But to sum it up for me, standalone in the, in the sense that we're saying where it's – we'll use Batman again if it, or even The Flash. Let's switch to somebody else. Yeah. So the Flash movie is just in his city. It's just with his, um, his villains. But it still exists in that universe. I'm all for but that. It doesn't, it then doesn't, can, but then it doesn't impact any other film. You know, yeah, it, it doesn't have to. Yeah. It's kind of like a standard issue, like it's issue run, like his issue run. Exactly. And then you have the other stuff that sometimes other issues where he pops in or whatever. Yeah. So we can we can focus more on that one character. Right. And and I think Marvel used to do that in the beginning. Like now it's fucking every movie is it's like one big movie from from Marvel, which is fine because they're they're later on, you know, in in their run. Yeah, they've done they've done almost they've done almost ten years now. Like the first um, the first phase, really. 
the first phase really it was all standalone. Yeah. And then when the Avengers came, they assembled together. And then once we saw the Avengers, then you start seeing cameos of yeah. people and this and that and the other thing. So um I I I agree that if if we're as long as they're not going, well this is it unless they do something like Red Sun or whatever, but then they're gonna have to figure out a way to really explain that. Right. Because it, it and maybe they do it in like a Wonder Woman esque way where it's almost like we're in the normal universe and then someone's there's a scientist that sees something else and then it goes into that <laughs> you know, I don't know, right. something cheesy just to, to make it make sense, but um I just want to see a Red Sun movie. Yeah, like I know, Red right? Sun oh my God. so good. And the philosophical debates in that fucking in in that fucking movie are so great. Oh yeah. Because Red Sun is Superman. Superman is inherently good. He, right. It wasn't just taught to be good. He's inherently good. So he's communist, mm-hmm. Soviet Union, but he's still good. Right. And and then he's believing. I wasn't. If I'm remembering correctly, he starts to see that the propaganda that his country was telling him about America wasn't exactly true. Right. That everybody's kind of the same. Yeah. You know. And then so when the, and um, then when the whole thing goes to hell, and then Lex sends out his kid. And then it lands right. in Kansas. You're like, oh shit! That I end have to reread. I have to reread. That end is so Red fucking Sonic. awesome. I love that ending. So ending. good. Uh, I have to reread it. It's so good. Um, but yeah, so that's kind of my main thing. Um, is is I'm fine with standalones. But yeah, the internet's going crazy because they're the same confusion I just had. Yeah. Although I don't go, I don't go manic about it. Yeah, but the, where, the, I think the thing is, is that oh, it's a slow news week. Let's put this together. What if they did this? Oh, that's a good idea, and then run. Yeah, with Yeah, but it. you know, it seems to always be a slow news week because every fucking week there's something new. Yeah, I know. You know what I mean? It's like Jesus Christ, guys. <laughs> All right. I only get my news from the lazy geeks, <laughs> right. but unfortunately. I'm the one telling the news. <laughs> I know. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm, I'm stuck in a cycle. <laughs> All right. So uh, we will end the show as we normally do with our douchebags of the week. So my douchebag of the week, obviously, is James Cameron. So it seems that I've just been like discussing a lot about him recently. It when just, you go full retard. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and and not just and not just you know the comments about his planned million of uh, Avatar sequels or the T two re release, or even talking about his films on the other podcast. But after all that, it seems that he's more of a jerk than I previously believed. Uh, he's a great filmmaker, but he is a bit behind on the times, especially in regards to Wonder Woman. Here's a quote: "Here, all of the self congratulatory back patting." Hollywood's been doing over Wonder Woman has been so misguided, Cameron said in an interview with The Guardian. She's an objectified icon, and it just makes male Hollywood doing the same old thing. I'm not saying I didn't like the movie, but to me, it's a step backwards. Sarah Connor was not a beautiful, a beauty icon. She was strong, she was troubled, she was a terrible mother, and she earned the respect of the audience through pure grit. To me, benefit of the characters like Sarah is is so obvious I mean half the audience is female now of course he was asked a follow up question as to why Hollywood can't depict quote unquote truly powerful women I don't I don't know he began there are many women in power in, in Hollywood and they do get to guide and shape what films get made I think no I can't account for it because how many times do I have to demonstrate the same thing over again? I feel like I'm shouting into a, in a wind tunnel. So by Cameron's own statements, which will probably be retracted later on, a powerful woman means not to be be- must not be beautiful. Strong women have to be troubled, in the case of Sarah Connor, a terrible mother, or to, and earn the respect of the audience. Why don't male stars have to be this way? How many times in romantic comedies were we rooting for an immature Lothario that believes betting women is the most important thing even if they make the smallest movement to a respectable scale the audience roots for them while cameron may have written um written some of the best strongest women to this point he is not an authority of a powerful woman because again we would be putting the faith of a female character or a female depiction in hollywood in a man since the story went viral patty jenkins director of wonder woman had a diplomatic and candid response to Cameron. James Cameron's inability to understand what Wonder Woman is 
or stands for to women all around the world is unsurprising as though he's a great filmmaker, he is not a woman. Strong women are great. His, his praise for my film Monster and our portrayal of a strong yet damaged woman was so appreciative, appreciated. But if a woman always has, um, if a woman have to always be hard, tough, and strong to and trouble to be strong, then we aren't free to be multidimensional or celebrated an icon of women everywhere because she is attractive and loving. Then we haven't come very far, have we? I I believe women can and should be everything, just like male lead characters should be. There is no right and wrong kind of powerful woman, and the massive audience, female audience who made the film a hit is can surely choose and judge their own icons and progress of uh, progress that sounded that sound you heard was the mic dropping when you believe that an ego egomaniacal and ruthless director should be the epitome of what, what a strong female is then we have truly lost sight of what wonder woman has gained simply due to the fact that she is beautiful she is not a true feminist icon but we can recast if we recast the character as a man it would be touted as the traditional hero's journey a woman trying to escape something is not the only requirement to make her strong wonder woman had her own sense of duty and when the world tried to overcome her with our sense of reality she overcame that and found her own truth with that she rose up and experienced victory and pain that is what makes her strong I think someone needs to get to the 20th century, Mr. Cameron, 21st century, Mr. Cameron. While your movies take place in the future, maybe your ide ideology of female icons should join us there as well. Oh, little burn at the end. <laughs> um, yeah, he was uh, he was out of touch with this. Um, and of course, and I agree with everything um, that she said that respect, respect is due. He's a great filmmaker. He's had some great movies and great strong female characters. Yeah. But he just, it's one of those things that it's best to just keep your fucking mouth shut. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, it, we, and it's not even a social justice warrior bullshit, but Wonder Woman was a great and has always been a great female, um, strong character. Yeah. And not, and, and to say that women have to be weak in a movie or troubled or, or whatever, it, it, come on. Yeah. You know, I mean, yeah, that is the trope. I mean, a movie that comes to mind, a terrible movie, uh, was Enough with Jennifer oh God, Lopez, yeah. where she had to overcome obstacles. The premise of the movie was good. It's just a bad fucking movie. And I think Jennifer Lopez is a horrible actor. Um, <laughs> but the, yes, that is a common trope that the female, the female lead needs to be weak at first. Right. And then overcome. Um, and we have seen male characters that way mm -hmm. in many films. I, I, I'm I'm lost at thinking of any, but where it's it's a it's an unlikely hero and he steps up to the plate. I mean that's been around. Don't let me get into. It. I've been going to Dungeons and Dragons so fucking much that that's kind of the trope of of a lot of male her heroes too. Now yes, we do see the Conan, the barbarians, and the fucking you know the I've always been a badass yeah. with 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 male characters, but still, you know what I mean. Right. And um. I don't hate Cameron for this. He, I, he obviously was just speaking out of turn, but he went full retard. Full retard, yeah, huh, dude. Like really you know, it is what it is. Yeah. Now, speaking of full retard, <laughs> segue. So my, I'm going to stay on task here. I'm not. I, I, I there's hope so because we don't want this to go too long. <laughs> right. There, there's a specific reason why. So my my douchebag of the week is Donald Trump, but there's a specific reason why. And, and I also want to start this off with, I am not anti-Trump for the sake of being anti-Trump. I am anti-stupidity. And I'm anti-ignorance of the law. That's what I'm anti. I'm anti-anti-constitution. I'm anti That's what I am. <laughs> okay? Now, I live in Arizona. Arizona gets a bad rap. It's gotten a bad rap for years as being a severely racist state, um, badgering the, the Hispanic community here. Uh, and a lot of that is warranted because of Sheriff Joe Arpaio, our, for, our former sheriff of Maricopa County. Now, he was taken. He was voted out. We got a new sheriff now. He seems he seems to be dope, you know, this and that. Now, Sheriff Joe Arpaio, former sheriff, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm so used to calling him Sheriff Joe Arpaio. Former Sheriff Joe Arpaio was found uh, guilty of criminal contempt 
for his hardline tactic going after undocumented immigrants. Now, what does that mean? Let me tell you right now, because I, I, I have experience. This, this dude, he would, he had the police around here just pulling Hispanics over for no reason. You know, it, it, it was kind of, kind of, um, they were getting arrested for nothing. Um, violence was happening. It, it was, it was, it was, it, it was starting to get to a point where it reminded you of LA in the early 90s. But just with Hispanics, like it, they were being singled out, and it was bad. And it, he was a confirmed fucking racist. Like just things that he said over the years, and and his actions. Not to mention, Mister Hard on DUIs has more DUIs than anyone in the fucking country. Right. You know. So whatever. So the Arizona justice system, the state of Arizona, found him guilty of criminal contempt, and he was looking at jail time. I don't give a fuck how old he is. It doesn't matter to me. He was found guilty. That's it. Our state government solved the problem. Then here comes Donald fucking Trump and pardons him. Now, here's here's my first issue with this. Any president, I don't care who he is, I think the pardoning thing is dumb. You should not be allowed to swoop into a state and say, hey, fuck you guys, this guy's cool. And every president's done it. So we can't just single out Trump. Although Trump's doing a little early in his career. Right. But every president has has pardoned people where you're like, why? That doesn't make any sense. Clinton pardoned a shit ton of people. You remember back in mm-hmm. the day? So it's not it's not the simple fact that and he, and and Trump goes on on quote to say he was just doing his job. First of all, you have no fucking idea what he was doing because you barely think about this state. I know this for a fact, because everyone in New England thinks Arizona doesn't exist for the most part because when I lived over there and I told everyone I was moving to Arizona people were like uh the desert like that's all they say <laughs> like you're gonna go I thought I was gonna move to a tent so he had no fucking idea he was out of scope much like all his other shit he just doesn't know he doesn't know what's going on and doesn't care to know Donald Trump seems to be that guy who knows nothing but thinks he knows everything we know this. Right. Okay. Um, so he pardons him. So he gets off scot-free. That was disrespectful to the state of Arizona. It was disrespectful to the people of Arizona. The the law system here. And I got some quotes here from Democratic and Republican leaders. So Joe Arpaio illegally targeted and terrorized Latino families. Our community voted him out of power. Donald Trump can't change that. This is before he pardoned him. Uh, wrote Greg Stan- Stanton, the Democratic mayor of Phoenix. Now, Arizona is, it is technically a red state, a Republican state, but it's been slowly sliding to the other side. Um, I would call Arizona more of a moderate state. Um, but we have a high uh, uh, retiree population. So that keeps the red up a little bit. Um, Arizona Senator John McCain, Republican John McCain, said in a statement on the patent, No one is above the law, and the individuals entrusted with the privilege of being sworn law officials should always seek to be beyond reproach in their commitment to fairly enforcing the laws they swore to uphold. Um, He goes on to say, Mr. Opaio was found guilty of criminal contempt for continuing to illegally profile Latinos living in in Arizona based on their perceived immigration status in violation of of a judge's orders. Um, the president has the authority to make this pardon, but doing so at this time undermines his claim for the respect of rule of law, as Mr. Apayo has shown no remorse for his actions. And then finally, the last quote here is from uh, our, another senator for Arizona, also Republican, Jeff Flake. Um, regarding the Apayo pardon, I would have preferred that the president honor the judicial system or judicial process and let it take its course. Now, this is this is a growing trend with Trump as he is just ignoring law um, and he's acting as a, a king basically um, and if he keeps doing it people can get pissed off we already know Congress is getting irritated with him but I'm not going to get into that I'm talking about just Arizona that I guarantee you next election they're going to slide a little bluer in 2020 because the majority of people here hated it Sheriff Joe Pyle. They hated him. Because he was an embarrassment and a fucking asshole. 
and we have a shit ton of Hispanics in the state. And no, they're not all fucking illegal. They can vote too. So best believe that I've actually I should thank Trump to be honest with you, because things are going to switch around here and I'm happy to see it. We have too many people here that want to be Californians anyway. So I'm surprised it hasn't happened, <laughs> but I, I see, I see Arizona as a moderate state, but it's stuff like this that makes everyone think that we're this crazy fucking super alt-right place. And we're not we we have a huge Hispanic population and they, they do not have issues here. As as people like they did until Joe Arpaio was taken <laughs> off of his fucking job, they, 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 we we have a great fucking state. I love Arizona. Fuck everybody. All right, is what I'm trying to say. And if he and oh the other part too, past all this, this is this is probably petty, but I'm just gonna let this out. So when he came here, this is last Tuesday, he came here and he landed at fucking Sky Harbor Airport. I live I work across the street from Sky Harbor Airport. The traffic. Because it was people going to his rally, or it was people going to protest his rally, or it was people, it's like, fucking Jesus Christ, I just want to go home. People are telling me at work, what do you think about Trump? The Trump here, I'm like, I don't fucking care. He's, he, it, I said, the only thing I think is, it's, it's kind of sad that the standing president has to go to a rally like he's campaigning. I think that's kind of sad. Like he it has to make a big event out of pardoning, so he could have did that from DC. Yeah. It's a smack in the face to to everybody in this state. That's all I'm saying, and we all know that Trump likes to smack people in the fucking face, metaphorically, <laughs> <laughs> with his with his e peen and shit. Pop 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 on Twitter. Yeah. I'm done. I'm sorry. I soapboxed a little bit, but I'm just mad. I a little little close to the grain when it happens near where you live, you know. Yeah. All right. And then I'll read the thing now. Yeah, I guess on I was that all note. Fo- I was I was focused. I was like, "Fuck this shit." <laughs> um, that's all for the episode. Please rate and review the show on iTunes because it always helps. Want to catch our any of our back catalog episodes? You can definitely find them on Stitcher, iTunes, iHeartRadio, and Google Play Music, as well as our website, thelazygeeks.com. If you want to suggest any stories for the show, you can share them on our Facebook page. We have other social media outlets as well, such as Twitter and Instagram, both under the the name The Lazy Geeks, all one word. Uh, And feedback is always a pleasure to read. Uh, You can drop it on our official site, thelazygeeks.com, or send it to our mailbag at thegeeks at thelazygeeks.com. And you can find me on the interwebs. No. (laughs) On Twitter at mostly Pornhub, right? Yeah, <laughs> I, I'm hugely active there. But outside of the, the, the you know 20 minutes out of the day that I'm not there, you can find right. me on Twitter at a middle aged geek, Instagram middle aged underscore geek, where you can check out my other podcast, the Extended Play Movie Podcast, on Stitcher, iTunes, and Google Play Music. We have a Facebook page, uh, facebook.com slash the middle aged geek, and you can check it out all out on themiddleagegeek.com. This week we're doing, I believe it is releasing Aliens this week, speaking of James Cameron. Um, so we'll be doing, uh, we're, we're finishing, rounding up our sequels that are better than the original. So this Wednesday we will be dropping uh, Aliens. And Aliens is definitely better than, so <laughs> so much better than the original. I didn't even know there was an original. <laughs> I thought true. Aliens was the first one. <laughs> Um, and you can find me on Twitter at SapienTLG and my blog, the outnumbered dadblog.wordpress.com, which has, um, hasn't seen a new article in a little bit. I have been working 60 hours a week. Bear with me. Um, but when I get home, I basically die inside <laughs> and then wake up and go back to work. So um, I'll definitely, that's going to be coming full swing uh, here pretty soon. All right. And be sure to tune in on Friday for our Just Another Podcast. Um and uh, and I'm, I'm going to say this because in September, we technically have five Fridays. And usually for us on a fifth Friday, we usually tend to do a bonus episode. But because next weekend is actually Labor Day weekend, I'm thinking we may take the week off. And then yeah. uh, and then on the following week, jump back up with our away team, our main show away team and continue the rest of the um, rest of the thing. So, you know. It's a holiday weekend. Adam can relax and enjoy the holiday weekend. You know, that kind of stuff. And I'm on vacation. No, yeah. I got fucking that Friday off and Tuesday. It's a five day for me. There you fucking go. Bullshit. <laughs> All right. So that is it 
for this week. And basically in uh, two weeks, we'll uh, see you then. So peace out. This has been a production of the Lazy Geeks Network, available only at thelazygeeks.com. Goodbye.